Okay, now we are at our case 3, the case when we plugged our limit x equals a into our function, gotten a fraction b over c, and both the numerator and the denominator are 0. So we have a 0 over 0 limit. We should note that we study uh, 0 over 0 limits uh, extensively in calculus uh, because they are the most important type of limits. Uh, 0 over 0 limits are the most important type of limits because they form uh, the building block of the key count, uh, uh, concept in Calculus 1. So let's make special note of that. Uh, 0 over 0 limits are studied because derivatives, the key cal uh, Calculus 1 concept, are 0 over 0 limits. So let's look at how do we handle 0 over 0 limits in the next slides. Okay, so here's our first example of a 0 over 0 limit. Of course, when we plug 0 into the numerator, we get 4 minus 4, 0. Plug uh, 2 into the denominator, we get 2 minus 2, which is 0. So what do we do? Remember that we said our approach is going to be to try and find a way to pair this factor in the denominator that's going to 0 with the same factor in the numerator and to cancel it out. So it turns out that if we look at the numerator in a different way by factoring it, so we have factored the numerator and we can clearly see that this denominator factor x minus 2 can be paired with the same numerator factor x minus 2 and what we are effectively doing then is canceling the 0 over 0 part of the problem so it now looks like this so on removing the x minus 2 denominator and numerator we have this problem which is a case 1 problem we can just plug 2 in for x get 2 plus 2 and we have our result the limit 4 let's characterize the approach that we've used here as factor and cancel because this is a common way to resolve 0 over 0 limits alright so we have the factor and cancel approach uh, examined let's take a look at another approach to resolving a 0 over 0 limit Okay, so in example 3b, we again have a 0 over 0 limit because if we plug 9 into the numerator, we get square root of 9 minus 3 or 0, and we plug 9 into the denominator and get 9 minus 9 or 0. So how are we going to handle this problem? Let's notice that uh, we have a factor in the numerator that is of the form a minus b and that we consider the conjugate of the factor a minus b to be the factor a plus b. Well, it turns out that if we multiply a number involving a radical by its conjugate, we can remove uh, the radical in many cases, and that turns out to be the approach that we want to use here. So let's see. So we multiply the numerator by its conjugate, square root of x plus 3, but we cannot just multiply a uh, limit by something uh, because we change it, so we have to also multiply the denominator by the same thing, so we're effectively multiplying by 1 and not changing the problem. Let's see in the line below what this turns our limit into. So we multiply the numerator together, numerator factors together, we get just what we wanted to get. We get an x minus 9 in the numerator, which we can then pair with the x minus 9 in the denominator, and we no longer have a 0 in the denominator. We've removed the 0 over 0. So in the next line, let's see what we have. So we uh, have a case 1 limit again where we can just plug in, and so we plug in a 9 to the denominator and get 1 over 3 plus 3, and the result of 1 ninth. And so we have found a second way to uh, get the zero factor out of the denominator. We're going to call this approach. So this second approach is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. That could be the conjugate of the numerator as it was in this case, or it could be the conjugate of the denominator in another case. 
and that allows us to remove the zero factor in the denominator. So let's go to uh, our next video to look at the two remaining cases of zero over zero limits.